You see what I'm saying? There is beauty when you let the Bible speak. When we study scripture, when we study truth, we grow spiritually. Do you know that it also happens when we study the doctrines? When we study do doctrines, we grow spiritually. And I want to share that with you as well. You see, this is why Adventists are different. Because it's not about being weird. It's not relishing, and I'm using words that, that people use outside of the church. It's not about being weird or strange or kooky or nutty. We like that. No. Uh, it may look that way to others. But when you learn truth and you see it in its beauty, what choice do you have? Right. What choice do you have? You have none. You have none. Let me share with you a truth that I believe uh, explains this. Um, what happens to a person when they die? You know, that's one of the things that separate Adventists. We're not the only ones. There are other churches that believe it. But that's one of the things that separates Adventists from uh, some of the more mainline, more well-known Christian denominations. In some of these churches, they believe that when you die, that you die and you immediately go to heaven or hell. That they see death as a portal to an immediate change from one place to the other. You've heard of the tunnel of light, you know, you go towards the light, go towards the light. What happens when you let the Bible speak? When Adventists let the Bible speak, we see something that we see something different. Let me ask you to turn with me to Psalms chapter 13. In Psalms 13, 3, if we let David speak, we find out what David, how David viewed death. And in Psalms 13, this is a psalm encouraging people to have faith through trial. If you've ever been in a tough spot, you felt the world was crashing in around you, guess what? David understood that. And, and listen to what David writes in Psalms 13. Uh, I'm starting at verse 1. He says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, and lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. You see, David, when he referred to dying, he didn't refer, O oh Lord, when I... They're chasing me. They're, 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 they're after me. I want to die so that I can be in heaven with you. When he talked about death, he referred to death as a sleep. Well, let's let someone else speak in the Bible. Let's let the author of the Bible speak. Let's let the Lord Jesus Christ himself speak on this. If we turn to John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, we read that while Jesus is ministering, he received the message that one who he was especially close to, one whom he loved, was sick. And Jesus said, listen, he's, don't worry about it, he's not going to die. His name was Lazarus. Well, what happened to Lazarus? He died. And Jesus is, is talking to his disciples in John chapter 11, and I'm starting at verse 11. Um, these things he said, after that he said to them, our, father, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. If we look at the scriptures, we find that when the Bible refers to death, it refers to death as a sleep. What kind of a sleep is it? Is this an eternal sleep? Are we going to just be dead? Some people, there are some Christians. I don't know if I call them Christians, but there are some Christians who believe that when you die, that's it. You're fertilizer. Your existence, you're done. Is that true? Is that what the Bible says? Well, let's let the Bible speak again. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read something that Paul tells us. Paul is writing to this church. And these people were so excited about hearing the news of Jesus Christ. They, they were so excited to hear the news that Jesus is coming again. All this trouble is going to be ended. But they were afraid that when Jesus comes, they believed that when you die, that's it. 
when you when you die, they see you decompose, and that's it. And they say, well, my wife, my mother died. They're not going to go to heaven. I'll be alive when Jesus comes. But what about these people that I love so much? I'm going to miss them. So Paul has to write them, and he has to explain to them something about this. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm starting at verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means perceive those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And he ends that chapter, he says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. How free do you think that truth was to the Thessalonians? To think that my son, my daughter, my wife, they're dead in the ground, decomposed, gone. And Paul says, listen. You don't have to be in this hopeless state. God is going to resurrect these people. As a matter of fact, they're going to start rising up to meet the Father, to meet Christ before you do. And you'll get to be with them forever. Comfort one another with these words. How freeing do you think truth is? All right. Death is asleep. The Bible says that it's at the resurrection when these people will be woken up. Now, I, 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 I tried to sleep last night. My arm started aching. I woke up at midnight. I went downstairs to my study. When you have a house full of six kids, you know, there's very few times when it's quiet. Uh, amen? amen. <laughs> and so I need to go downstairs in, at midnight and spend time, you know, you need to hear God speaking in my office and stuff. And uh, is, is that what death is like? It's like, you know, you roll over in your grave every 500 years. It's okay if you died just before Jesus came, but what about those people that died a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years ago? What's, are they, is there some existence? Are they kind of like waiting? Kind of like, oh, you know, man. What's happening with them? Well, let's let the Bible speak to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, we hear the, some say the rantings of a lunatic. Because Solomon seemed that he was so wise, kind of lost his mind there for a bit. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, listen to what Solomon, the wisest man in the world, by the way, listen to what he said. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5 and 6, I'm going to read. This is what he says. He says, For the living know that they will die. But the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, he says, their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. Right. Solomon says that the dead know nothing. Let's add a couple more texts. We want to let the Bible speak. Psalms 146. Psalm 146, verse 3 and 4. Do not go away from you to, to turn. I'm sorry. Psalms 146, verse 3 and 4. This is what it says. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the son of a man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. In the King James Version, it doesn't say his plans. It says another word. What does it say? Anybody from King James? His thoughts. His thoughts perish. Let me, I want to read one more text to you. Letting the Bible speak. Isaiah chapter 38. 